Hajj is finished. And we just bade farewell to the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. And today is the last day of Eid and we are bidding Eid farewell. So if you were one who is blessed to fast the day of Arafah and other days and perform other acts of righteousness, then this is a sound reason for you to be happy during the days of joy and happiness, the days of Eid. It is indeed a valid reason for one to be joyful if Allah Azza wa had enabled him to perform acts of obedience. Because whilst you did or were enabled, others were unable. There are many people who died short of the 10 days of the Hijjah. Whilst others were unhealthy, unwell, and thus were physically unable to perform any act of worship. On the other hand, there are some people who were simply deprived because of their sins and shortcomings and negligence. So if Allah Azza, Azza wa Jal had blessed you and enabled you and facilitated for you the performance of acts of obedience, then you have all the right to be happy. Because this is real joy and happiness. See, for happiness to be something that we're rewarded for, it has to be legislated, Islamic, and it has to be performed for an objective and in a correct manner. Unlike the happiness of Qarun, for example, who walked out and walked in front of his people with pride and arrogance because Allah Azza wa Jal had blessed him with abundance wealth as described in the Quran. And he was walking arrogantly. He was happy, but with pride and arrogance. So some people advised him, saying, لا تفرح إن الله لا يحب الفريحين. Don't walk and be happy with ungratefulness to the favors of Allah. Indeed, Allah does not like those who arrogantly express happiness. So we cannot rejoice with pride and arrogance. And likewise, we cannot be happy for having fulfilled or achieved something that is impermissible. It is not a legislated nor a rewarded type of happiness when one sins and say, I did it. No, that's not the type of happiness for which you'll be rewarded. Say, O oh Muhammad, it is with the bounty of Allah and His mercy, for that let them rejoice. It is better than that which they collect. This is the type of happiness for which we will be rewarded. This was the understanding of the companions, radiallahu anhum. Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, said, Fadlullahi al-Qur'an. The bounty of Allah is the Qur'an in this verse. Wa rahmatuhu, deenuhu wa sunnatu nabiyihi wa anhadakum, aw ja'alakum min al-Muslimin. And his mercy is his religion, the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that he made you Muslims, meaning he had guided you to practice the faith and adhere to the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the type of happiness for which we will be rewarded. 
So, we express joy for what reason? Out of gratitude, out of thankfulness to Allah. So if you were able to fast, then be happy. If you were able to recite the Quran abundantly, be happy. If you were able to pray Qiyamul Layl, be happy. If you learn more about your faith during these 10 days, be happy. If you saw acts of obedience from your children, wife or household, be happy. These are all legislated Islamic reasons for one to be happy and for which he will be rewarded. Because you're happy for the sake of Allah. And the companions radiallahu anhum were keen on correcting misunderstandings. A uh, caravan of camels during the caliphate of Umar radiallahu anhu arrived. It had arrived from Al-Iraq. So Umar went out and he had another man with him and they started counting the camels. When they concluded, they discovered that the number they were told which was much less than the actual number they counted. The camels were, were much more. So Umar said, Alhamdulillah. The man said, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, O leader of the believers, Qul bi fadlillahi wa bi rahmatihi fadli dhalika fal yafrahu. Say, with the bounty of Allah and the mercy on His mercy, let them rejoice, thinking that this is what is meant by the bounty and mercy of Allah. He said, Kalla, no, indeed, this is not it. He said, Hada. These camels are what is meant by it is better than what they collect. Rather, it is the Quran and the Sunnah are the bounties and the bounty and mercy of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ in different occasions expressed his joy and felt happy. And these are practical teachings of the Prophet ﷺ for us to follow suit, for us to imitate, walk into his footsteps ﷺ. See, when the Prophet ﷺ migrated to Medina, the initial agreement between him and Al-Ansar, Al-Aus al Khazraj, the residents of Medina, was that they would protect him, support him within the boundaries of Medina. When it was time for the battle of Badr, they had to leave outside the boundaries of Medina, which means the agreement between him and them was not applicable. So when they were, when they came to know the surprise of the readiness of the Quraysh to fight a battle and how much they were outnumbered and that they went out unprepared for a battle whilst they were, it was a serious problem. And the Prophet ﷺ kept asking the companions for advice. Advise me, O people. And all the time he was intending with this statement, the people of Medina, not the migrants of, of Mecca. First Abu Bakr spoke and then Umar. That's not what he was after. He was after the people of Medina. Then Al-Nuqdad ibn Aswad. Radiyallahu anhu, one of the leaders of the Ansar, he said, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari, he said, O Messenger of Allah, Wallahi, la naqulu laka, kama qalat banu Israel li Musa, 
اذهب انت وربك فقاتلا انا ها هنا قاعدون no by Allah we will not tell you like the children of Israel said to Musa you and your Lord go and fight we are sitting right here ولكن نقول نقاتل عن يمينك وعن شمالك ومن أمامك ومن خلفك rather we will say and we say to you we will write we will fight to your right to your left in front of you and to your back والله إن خط بنا هذا البحر خذناه معه by Allah, if you were to walk, take us to walk into that sea, we would immediately immerse into it. And at that, the Prophet ﷺ became extremely happy. Another incident, the Prophet ﷺ received one of the leaders of the polytheists. He was the head of the tribe of Tayyip, Adi ibn Hatim. He came to the Prophet وسلم, announcing his embracing of Islam and gave pledge to the Prophet وسلم, at which the Prophet وسلم, became very happy. And this was also the practice of the companions. Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, is one of these examples. His mother was a very stubborn disbeliever. And one day, she mentioned the Prophet وسلم, with extreme bad words, to which he was saddened, or for which he was saddened, and cried and went to the Prophet وسلم, complaining. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, Ud'ullah an yahdi ya ummi. Call upon Allah to guide my mother. So he did, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it was only that. Abu Huraira went back home and found his mother taking a bath, a ritual bath for embracing Islam. She came out and he, she said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ He became very happy. رضي الله This is the type of happiness that entitles one of us to be rewarded. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Bounties of Allah عز وجل deserve one to be happy about in the books of الإمام البخاري المسلم Haram ibn Milhan radiallahu anhu, one of the great companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was amongst a group who were betrayed by uh, some of the disbelieving Arab tribes. See, these tribes had requested the Prophet sallallahu alayhi to send some of his companions to teach them Islam. But that's not that was not their intention. And when Haram radiallahu anhu and his friends arrived, they betrayed them and killed them. As the spear was penetrating the body of Haram radiallahu anhu, he said something that is extremely amazing. He said, Fuzdu wa rabbil Kaaba. By the Lord of the Kaaba. I won. And he died. One of the polytheists, now this is something he rejoiced for. He was happy that he was being killed for the sake of his faith. That he obtained shahada. One of the polytheists 
who took part in killing them was next to him and looked at him with astonishment. How can this be? How can anyone get killed, be betrayed, and win? What is the reason for the happiness of this person who just got killed? This phrase or this statement of Haram radiallahu anhu stuck to his mind and he kept thinking about it until Allah Azza wa Jal made it the cause of him embracing Islam. Brothers, sisters, Allah Azza wa blessed us to fast, to pray Qiyam, to utter dhikr, to recite Quran, do different forms or types of obedience and acts of worship. So let us not retreat. Let us not be as Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّتِي نَقَضَتْ غَزْلَهَا مِنْ بَعْدِ قُوَّةٍ أَنْكَثَا And do not be like her who untwisted the strong thread or her thread after it was strong. This is an example Allah Azza wa Jal is given for those who go back who perform acts of obedience and then disobey. Who become, he will be, who become committed and then go back to become negligent. Let us make the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah initiating an initiating point or a starting point marking a new life. Let's continue upon what we were on during these days. Let us not undo, let us not untwist the thread we spun after it was strong. We seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal in turning to disobedience after obedience, in becoming negligent after we were committed. Brothers and sisters, real joy and happiness is when Allah Azza wa Jal enables you to remain firm on faith. Real happiness and joy is when you die whilst your heart is firm on Islam. Real joy and happiness is when you go on the day of judgment and take your book with your right hand, real joy and happiness is when you're told to enter Jannah. This is real happiness and this is real success. As Allah Azza wa Jal said, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَاسِ he who is moved from fire and is admitted into Jannah has indeed succeeded. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal this type of success. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal this type of joy and happiness. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us to worship Him and obey Him and rejoice for that and express our gratitude to him for having facilitated that. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin.